Websites are fluid, interactive, and accessible by everyone at any time. So ask yourself, can someone trust coming to your website that their privacy will be respected? Also ask yourself, can they be confident that they won't download a virus, that their visit is secure, or that their data is only viewable to those that have specific rights to view it? In this lesson, we talk about ways to add user privacy and user trust for visitors on your website. You know, Emma, user privacy used to only be an ethical issue rather than a legal one. As of late, however, many countries are writing laws to protect users' privacy. GDPR, or the General Data Protection Regulation, is legislation specific to users in the European Union to give them power over their data privacy. In the United States, many states are passing privacy laws so users have the right to access and delete personal information and to opt out of the sale of personal information, among other things. Now, I'm sure even with laws, practices that may not be illegal can still be considered unethical, right? That's right. To keep it simple, let's break down four main areas someone can focus on to create standards to aid user privacy and trust. All right, let's do it. One aspect of user privacy and trust is spam emails. Ugh, gross, right? It's easy to complain about an endless amount of spam emails. I know I do, but it's sobering to think about the ways that we may contribute to this. You can do a few things to avoid being part of the spam engine. When you send emails on behalf of your business, you want to check for a few things. Make sure that the list is from opted in users, that it's clear how one can unsubscribe from the list and that the link to the unsubscribe is available in the email, that the user is indeed unsubscribed. Let's face it, sending unwanted emails is a blurry line of ethics. On one hand, that's email marketing, right? Sending unwanted emails in hopes that you're offering something the user wants. And on the flip side, knowingly sending unwanted emails to trap people or to nag into engagement or to find clever ways of keeping them from being 100% unsubscribed, is an ethical issue. Some businesses will have multiple lists and subscribe people to all their lists without the user requesting to be subscribed. Then if the user unsubscribes, the business is careful to only make that request from a list like marketing while still having them subscribe to news or product updates. Giving an option to unsubscribe from all lists is an ethical practice. Now when it comes to websites, what happens to visitors while they're on the website should be disclosed, right? Yes, you should also state what happens to their data after they leave. For compliance with emerging laws, these disclosures will also need to state how users can request to have their information removed. Common practice is to use a privacy policy. Yes, it's actually become the standard to now have a privacy policy. And one problem for most website owners is making sure that the privacy policy is accurate. And it's tough for you to know what should be inside the privacy policy when you don't know how your site works or what information is being tracked and how the information is being stored. Asking your website designer or developer the questions needed to generate a privacy policy is completely acceptable. This will make sure your privacy policy is accurate. To obtain these questions, visit some privacy policy generators. Answer what you do know and then pass along the questions to your website professional that you don't. If you're building in-house, do your due diligence to understand what cookies and third-party apps mean, as these are real privacy concerns for many users. And think about it, if I can't understand my privacy policy, I bet you can bet that my web visitor won't either. Exactly, so make sure the privacy policy and other disclosures are clear, easy to understand, and easily accessible on the website. When it comes to WordPress and other content management solutions, information is often stored in a database. Now with databases comes the risk of that information being hacked. Storing data also implies sending that data across the web. For this reason, you need to make sure your website has an SSL certificate. SSL stands for Secure Sockets Layer. Website that collects information should have an SSL certificate because they are sending sensitive information to a third party or database. 
An SSL certificate makes the website URL HTTPS instead of just HTTP and creates an encrypted connection for the information to be submitted. Now access is another concern. In your business, ask who has access to the database or the merchant solution. And think about it, when storing information on your website or on a credit card merchant, just handing someone a login can be dangerous. If the user's data is stored insecurely, or let's say it's just accessible to the wrong people, that data can still be compromised even if sent across the web securely. So when working with support teams, web designers, web developers, or marketers, consider only giving access based on their needs. Most software and online systems have features like creating lower level access accounts or delegated access. Now, if you do need to hand over your account information, make sure to send it through a password manager or other encrypted means. Make sure your username and passwords are unique and a challenge to hack and change passwords after access is no longer needed. The last aspect to think about regarding user data and trust is the use of third-party apps. It is inevitable that you'll use third-party apps to create features and functionalities that help capture leads, convert customers, and engage visitors online. So ask yourself, are you unknowingly sharing user information from your website? Chances are the answer is yes. Therefore, many privacy policies will mention the use of third-party apps on the site stating that the owner of the website cannot control what third parties decide to do. That's right, Emma. And you can't control what third parties will do with the information they grab from users on your websites. But you can audit and control the website's third party usage. If sharing data is a concern for your website visitors, let your web designer or developer know that reducing access to user data is a priority. Be aware that this may limit the types of features that you can have. Good callouts. And websites may also be using font libraries that track user data. There are alternatives like hosting fonts locally or using standard computer system fonts. And again, if sharing data is an issue, make this known to your contractor or in-house staff. Other interactive third-party apps that are common and also track and store user data include Google Maps, Google Analytics, YouTube, and Vimeo videos. These functions may be required, but it is worth noting when discussing user data and user trust. Installing social widgets invite those third parties to see and track user data, the same with many form captures. Yes, even form captures used to verify if someone is human can track and store user data. Now with all of these areas, it is up to you to practice what you want to implement for your business. And for websites that are interactive with forms and tracking for the sake of marketing, user data is very important. However, what you can do as a web owner to help curb data breaches or mismanagement of the user's data can be impactful. Even though your country, province, or state may not have laws covering user privacy, it's still wise to follow ethical practices. One day soon, anti-spamming and online privacy laws will be the norm. And if you already set up your website with this in mind, you will be better prepared for changes to come.